We're all set to go. The chair notes time is 6.02 p.m. I call this meeting the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. I'm Z as ZBA chair. I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. We'll begin with the roll call of the ZBA members and panel for tonight's meeting. Steve Judge is present. Mr. Philip White. Present. Ms. Hilda Greenbaum. Present. And Ms. Sarah Marshall. Here. The quorum is present. Also attending the public hearing tonight is uh, Mr. Rob Wachilla, planner for the town. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 21, extended by the chapter two of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote meetings. Members of the public who wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 48 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40A, and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff and may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or for additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen or by pressing star nine on their phone. The chair with the assistance of the staff will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, Provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where the information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is where the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file a decision. For variance, the board has 100 days from the date of the filing of the variance to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting member, board members and is filed with the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there's a 20-day annual, 20-day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with a relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After the, after the appeal period, the permit must be recorded with the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, public hearing on ZBA FY 2024-13, Joan O'Meara and Dan Wallach, request for a special permit under Section 5.0112A of the Zoning Bylaw for an accessory dwelling unit ADU, over 50% of habitable GS, uh, GSF of the principal structure, and to extinguish ZBA FY 2008-09 for a converted dwelling, with a requested waiver from section 7.0002 at 10 Page Street, map, 11, map 11C, parcel 1, 135, RG, General Residence Zoning District. ZBA FY 2024-14, Vivian Addison and Eric and Allen Eric Travis request for a special permit under section 5.0112A of the zoning bylaw for an accessory dwelling unit, ADU over 50% of habitable GSF of the principal structure on Wildflower Drive in Amherst Woods. Map 21D, parcel 7, RO outlying residents Zoning District and ARP Aquifer, Aquifer Recharge Protection Overlay District. ZBA FY 2024-15 Town of Amherst requests for a special permit under Section 3.231 of the Zoning Bylaw to construct structures on the Flood Prone Conservancy District, including bridges, boardwalks, and at 191 West Pomeroy Lane 
former the, the former Hickory Ridge Golf Course, map 19D, parcel 10, RN, neighborhood residence, and FPC flood prone conservancy zoning districts. And a public meeting on, F, on ZBA FY 2019-06, Antonio Marquez Diaz from Mexcalito, to satisfy condition six, in which the new business owner shall present to the board for review and approval at a public meeting, an updated management plan and any other information necessary to confirm that the use is operating within the scope of the special permit. The discuss following these items, a general discussion from the public general comment period on matters not before the board tonight, and, other, and after that, other business not anticipated within the last 48 hours. To begin, do any members have any disclosures they wish to make for tonight's meetings? If not, the first order of business is a public hearing on ZBA FY 2024, Joan O'Meara and Dan Wallach request for a special permit under section 5.0112A of the zoning bylaw for accessory dwelling unit ADU over 50% of habitable GSF of the principal structure and to ext extinguish ZBA FY 2008-09 for converted dwelling with a requested waiver from section 7.0002 at 10 Page Street Map 11C, parcel, parcel 135, RG, General Residence Zoning District. Um, I was not able to attend the site visit, so um, um, who would like to review the, or maybe uh, Rob, you could head us up, uh, give us a review of the site visit, and then anybody else that would like to add may do so. Sure, thanks, Steve. Um, sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, so basically it was myself, Ms. Greenbaum, and Ms. Marshall who attended the site visit. Um, both the applicants were home at the time, and we did walk around the outside of the property. Uh, we looked at the ADU. Um, the owners marked on the side where the addition is going to go with tape, and I believe they also drew a, a marker, marking type uh, material on there to show the dimensions, as well as where the roof line is going to go and where the uh, overhang is going to kind of end on the roof. So um, site visit was quick. Um, I took video and sent it to yourself, Mr. Judge, and uh, Mr. White for your review. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, Ms. Greenbaum, Ms. Marshall, is there anything you want to add? Uh, oh, Justin, I'm oh. sorry. Go ahead, Hilda. No, I was just going to say I have nothing to add. I would just add, in case anyone's listening, there's already, maybe it's, I get it, maybe it's a converted dwelling and not an ADU, but there already is an existing second structure and they're proposing to add one small room one room to it so all right i can add that that existing structure was a dwelling converted from a model t garage or model a garage built in the 1930s when the house was built thank you guys i appreciate that um the submissions that the board has received We've received applicant submissions, um, uh, ZBA 2024-13 application form, management form, complaint response form, site plans prepared by Randall Iser, um, and standard lease agreement. In addition, there are staff submissions, ZBA 2008, uh, 2008, I'm having trouble with that. 2000 seems so long ago. <laughs> ZBA 2008-09 conditions and the building and foundation plans. Uh, and also there's a requested waiver of um, 7.0002. Um, with that, there's no other, there's no public comment that I'm aware of, is there, Rob? If not, all right, we'd like to hear from the applicants. Um, could you bring in the applicants, Rob? Sure, let me, uh, I see Joan O'Meara in attendance. so. Joan or Dan, whoever's controlling it, please accept this panelist's invitation. And just for the record, I want to note that Rob Mora, building commissioner, has uh, joined the meeting as well. Joan, you're muted. How is that? Is, is that, that better? Yep. Now I hear you. Uh, I thank hear you all. Um, I appreciate your time and energy. This has been a project that's uh, 
been uh, a small 200 square foot addition that we really just want to add on to the team Joan, house. Before we go any farther, just a uh, name and address for the record. Joan Please. O'Meara, 37 Cosby Avenue, Amherst, Mass. Thank you. Owner of 10 Page Street, Amherst, Mass. Dan Wallach, also of the same residence. Great. Thank you, guys. You may proceed. Um, I don't think we need need to add anything further, but if you have specific questions, we'll be glad to answer them. Well, just briefly, just, um, I guess the one thing I would say, just tell us, you have an existing structure there now. Yes. Um, your goal is to add um, another room to that structure to make an ADU. You have a converted dwelling now and you want to add a room there for, to make an ADU, correct? Correct. And the reason you need a, a, a special permit is that it's um, it's over 50% of the habitable space of the converted dwelling. Is that correct? Well, it's over 50% of the our main oh, residence. Principal dwelling, excuse me. 37, yeah. Principal dwelling, yes. Yep. Okay. Which is like somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,400, 1,400 yeah. square feet. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Great. Yeah. I'm familiar with the area. Um, I've seen it. I've walked, I used to walk there all the time in that in the block. I think it's a, a it seems to me to be an appropriate um, addition and consistent with neighborhood. Um, I wonder if any board members have questions. No. Um, there's no questions from board members. This is the opportunity for public comment on this. Um, Rob, do we have anybody from the public who wishes to comment on this application? Sure, and I guess just a reminder, those in attendance who wish to make a public comment, please indicate by either using the raise hand function or if you're calling in, press star nine. And there is one gentleman who has a hand raised, uh, Nathaniel. I'm going to allow for them to briefly comment. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Nathaniel. Thank you, Daniel, just name and address and uh, try to keep your comments to about three minutes if you can. I can, I can do it in much less than that. I'm here with my father, David Mulcahy, uh, as well, uh, 14 Cosby Avenue. So um, my parents purchased a house on 14 Cosby Avenue in 1969. Um, and we have been wildly enthusiastic about Dan and Joan's projects. Um, the work they did to the house when they first moved in vastly improved the neighborhood. Um, the additional unit they built was uh, extremely tasteful and also improved the neighborhood. We are just here to say, I can't think of anything more than wanting to support them in every possible way. They are outstanding neighbors. Their architectural design and taste, uh, even gardening, have improved our neighborhood infinitely for decades, and we're wildly in favor of this project. Thank you very much. Any other people, anybody else wishing to speak? Please use, raise your hand. Not seeing anybody else, Mr. Chair. Oh, there is a gentleman named Jay, forgive me if I mispronounced your last name, Taneha. Going to go ahead and allow them to talk. Thank you. Yes, uh, last name is Tanasia. It's Jay Tanasia. I live at 77 McClellan Street, uh, just um, adjacent to this property uh, in question. Uh, I wanted to second the uh, the perspective. These uh, Dan and Joan have been wonderful neighbors, and we're excited for uh, to support them. So we're really happy to see uh, 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 their their plans and uh, happy. And we just did a large addition ourselves, and uh, they were uh, very very wonderful neighbors through the process. So we're, we're uh, uh, supportive of this. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Taneha. Anybody else? Any other public comments, Rob? Uh, not seeing any hands, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> All right. Um, we always give the applicant an opportunity to respond to public comments if they so choose. As you know, Joan, you always get a chance as an applicant to respond, but um, I don't know how you, if there's any need to, but you're welcome to if you, if you wish. Uh, how do I do that? 
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yep. All right. Um, if there are no, are there any board questions for the board questions on the matter or comments? If not, um, I would entertain a motion that we move into the public meeting on this application while keeping the public hearing open in case we need to gather additional information or comments. Do I have such a motion? Yeah, so moved. Is there a I'll second? second? I'll second. All right, any discussion on the motion? If not, vote occurs. Chair, chair, I vote yes. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. The vote is four to nothing. The motion carries. Uh, we're in a public meeting. This public meeting portion is where the board, generally where the board deliberates and it's not uh, normally an opportunity for public comment. Um, I'm generally disposed towards this. It seems to make sense. We we set up rules for um, um, ADUs, which specifically said that the board can, that if the ADU goes beyond what can be done by site, uh, by right, the board can look at the uh, the ADU and approve it if, it if it's in its judgment it deems it appropriate. I think this is an appropriate uh, ADU, so I have no problem with this at all. Um, Ms. Marshall. Yeah, I would say that that um, if your main residence, if the principal residence is relatively small, then ADUs are also going to be even smaller and it's easy to go over 50% just because they're small, um, but eventually there's too small to be useful. So <laughs> these yeah. uh, structures are are far apart. It's a very large lot, um, and so I think they'll be quite compatible with the neighborhood. And you know, neither one is is a is an outsized structure by any means. Yep, I agree. Any other comments or questions from the board? You have a comment from Mr. White, Mr. Chair. His hands up. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. I, I, I lost it in the books. There you go, Mr. White. I do too. It's a lovely place to do a meeting from. <laughs> no, uh, I would agree with the both of you. Um, I understand the need with the ADU, but as Ms. Marshall was saying, you know, if your primary residence um, tends to be, you know, on the smaller side, then obviously it's not difficult to go over fifty percent. Um, so yeah, I'm inclined to. Kind of think positively on this. Yeah, and I think going over fifty percent in this instance does nothing to the detriment of the neighborhood at all. In fact, I think it it helps it out because it gives a it's a more attractive housing a more attractive unit than it otherwise would be. So I think that's all great. Miss Greenbaum, you have your hand up. Yes, I wasn't going to bring this up, but because it really isn't necessary at this point. But I think we really need to have a discussion about gross square footage. Because I believe from looking at the assessor's website and then going to the mass building code that they have underestimated the living area of the house. But um, it doesn't change my opinion. I still think that this needs to be passed. But we should discuss gross building area sometime. Great. Okay. That's a good thing to put for our um, at an administrative meeting. Can I can I ask which structure did you think was underestimated? The the main house at fourteen sixty. Okay. Um, just very briefly, looking at the um, assessor's page, there are three columns of measurements. One is the one on which they base the evaluation. One is the actual measuring to the outside walls, which is the definition of uh, gross square footage. And then the third column, effective area, but essentially um, the second floor, which is evaluated at half the number of square feet for determining the evaluation, um, is, I have it written down over there, 600 and something feet rather than 300 and something feet, which would bring him under the 50% if we, but we, we don't have a consensus on how actually the square footage is measured in the zoning bylaw, though it's on the, I was told, part of the building code. So I checked the building code on the second floor. Anything inside of 
three square, three feet high knee walls, counts as habitable living area. And so uh, I think we need to decide how we're going to measure it next time because we might have saved him from <laughs> issues involved in calling a public hearing. Thanks, Ms. Greenpaw. Hmm. Um, what I'd like to do now is just review conditions as proposed in the, in the uh, draft project application report. Um, conditions suggested by the, in the report, I think, are, are, are fine. First one is the predicament standard has to be built as um, as per the site plans. We have to nullify the existing um, special permit. Um, either one or the other has to be out of the dwelling units have to be occupied by the owner. No more than two adults should live there within the ADU at any time. Exterior lighting is downcast. Street numbers visible. Parking shall occur and improved services only. Um, Trash receptacles shall be screened. Property shall register the rental re, re, residential rental program. Um, so standard provision that upon a renewal of the residential rental program to submit complaints. 11, um, the exterior siding of the ADU shall match that of the principal structure and the roof of the ADU shall either be cedar shingles or match the existing shingles. Anybody have any problem with those conditions or do they wish to add any conditions to them? List of conditions. If there's no further, if there's no um, discussion about conditions, Hilda, is your hand up to to talk? Oh no. Okay. Um, if there's no no discussion on conditions, I would entertain a motion to approve the conditions in block. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any for any discussion? If not, the uh, vote occurs on the motion to approve the conditions and block. Chair votes yes. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Aye. Conditions are approved. Now we have to look at the, um, the waiver request and the findings that we have to make under um, Section 5. Generally, the, the findings we have to make under, under um, Section 5 are is that um, there, there are several general requirements. Um, this isn't a formal finding, but we, but in view of this application, uh, all the, uh, the requirements from A of 50113A through N are, seem to be um, satisfied. The one question on, this, on the, the draft is uh, extent of the Detached dwelling shall be located behind the front building, but that's a little complicated. It's, the point of this is was to make sure that it didn't stick out. It's actually going to um, the new room is actually going to be facing the other building, so I don't think it really this is really applicable on this point. That's the only thing that's raised. I think all the Steve, Steve, could I add to that? Yes, you sure can. Yeah, uh, yeah that yeah. this property runs the entire length of a block. I mean, it has okay. three bounded by three streets. So what is the front and what is the? Yeah, doesn't, exactly. And it, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't get closer to one of those streets. It gets closer to the house. It's just, in this case, this is a case where the this requirement just doesn't work for this property. Right. I think. Yeah, I think. I'm glad you agree, Ms. Marshall. Um, lastly, we have a waiver request uh, for, the, for parking, for, and that is, um, Waves so that they can have, because again, this runs the whole length of the block, having car parking in the driveway facing Crosby Avenue, they're not there, they should be able to do that, continue that. And I would urge that we um, grant that waiver. And then um, the design review principles, again, the, from section 5.0113Q are met. Um, even to the extent of the, the color of the building. So um, I think we've met all the requirements under under Article 5. I recommend that we approve the waiver. And now I'll run through the 10.38 uh, findings that we have to make for any special permit. The first is 10.380 and 10.381, that it's suitably located in the neighborhood, I mean, it's a residential neighborhood. 10.382, 83, 85. 
eight five and eight seven. Uh, it would not constitute a nuisance due to air and water pollution or a number of other factors. It's not. There's no significant change in that. Ten point three eight four is deals with appropriate facilities. Um, it has appropriate facilities for the operation of, of the proposed use. Um, 10.386 is conformance with parking regu regulations. If the, if the waiver is granted, um, then we would be in compliance on 10.386. 10.387, safe vehicular movement. It's already, I think it, it has that already within the, uh, within the property. 10.388 is not applicable. 10.389 is disposal or storage of refuge and they, and they are um, they, they have sufficient facilities 10.390 and 391 um, are not applicable 10.392 deals with adequate landscaping um, and they have they have pro provided for uh, screening uh, at the back of the property um, for, for lights 10.393 uh, deals with uh, adjacent properties from uh, lighting uh, and they're going to have downcast lighting there, so I think we meet that. 394 doesn't apply. 10.395 is creating disharmony uh, with respect to terrain. There's no, there's no significant change uh, regarding that. 10.396, screening for storage areas. There's screening of trash receptacles. 10.397 is adequate recreational facilities. There's only a modest change in the amount of open space. And 10.398 is it is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. I think that's clear that it is. Um, so I, I'm prepared to, to have a motion that we grant the waiver request uh, 7.002, if I'm right on that, Rob, and that we make the findings required in Article 5 as well as Section 10.38. Mr. Chair, before we grant the waiver, is it okay if I clarify what the waiver is for? Sure. All right. So the waiver from 7.0002 deals with having more than two vehicles parked in the front property line of the property, basically the front setback line. And in this case, the applicant has two driveways. So one is essentially where the two cars park for the ADU and towards the front where the main structure is, is their driveway to park for that property. So by granting this waiver, you don't restrict them to only having two cars park in the front setback at all times, which, mind you, they have frontage on three streets, McClellan, Page Street, and Cosby Ave. And that's essentially what you're granting with this waiver. I have my So let's just have the motion out there, then we'll have a discussion of the motion. So do I have a motion to, do I have a motion to approve the special permit application? Yeah. With waivers and conditions and extinguishing the ZBA FY 2008 and to close the public hearing on this matter. Is there a yeah, second? Yeah, I'll move and I have a comment to make. I'll second it. All right, move and comment. Ms. Marshall, you had your hand up first. Oh, Under yeah. I, I, just, I just need someone to explain. I would like someone to explain to me under 5.0113. Yep. Item C. Oh, no, D. Refer no, oh no, dwelling may be used simultaneously for accessory lodging. What does that mean? What does that mean, accessory lodging? So basically, that refers to like a like a bed and breakfast. Can Airbnb? Or like a, yeah, like a short term <laughs> rental. Okay. It, essentially, okay. you know, a way of, like a short term rental to make money off of. Basically, that's what accessory lodging is. Okay. And Thank also, Mister Chair, I want to comment. Do we vote to approve the findings? Yep. I thought we did. I don't think we did. No, that's why I, I noticed you jumped ahead a little bit there. So I, I don't know if we approved the findings as as read off. Oh, I thought it was all in one big motion. Can we not do that? We I'll just, we'll amend the motion to approve the findings. If, if we didn't do it, we'll approve the motion to, to um, adopt. I have something to add. Okay. But so I, just, I wanted to just add second, the, Greenbaum, the 10 that, point, the, the first one, appropriateness in the neighborhood that these people receive the certificate of appropriateness from the local historic district commission oh, good for the building and for the lighting. And I think that's appropriate to add that. Great, yes. Thank you, Hilda. Good. All right, so the motion before us is a motion to approve the special permit application to, to make the findings required under 
uh, 10.38, as well as the waiver, as well as findings under Article 5 to extinguish, extinguish ZBA FY 2008-09 and to close the public hearing on this matter. That's the motion, all in one. All right, is there any discussion on that motion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. It's a roll call vote and we need four votes. The chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. The vote is four to nothing. Um, the motion carries. Joan and Dan, congratulations. Oh, Good luck. we're done? Oh, You're great. done. You're okay. done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for all your time and effort. Well, thank, thank you. Mr. Chair, do you want me to go over the next steps with the applicants so they're aware of the process? You know, I, I think you can do that off offline. Okay. You know, I, I, um, and I think Joan's probably pretty familiar with them, but um, yeah. we can do that offline. Okay. And thank they you. Be, they should just be back in touch with, with you, Rob, if they if shortly to go, over, to go over all that. Okay. All right. Next order of business is ZBA FY 2024-14, Vivian Addison and Alan Eric Travis requesting a special permit under section 5.0112A of the zoning bylaw for an accessory dwelling unit over 50% of habitable ground. I guess it's gross, whatever GSF is. What is GSF? Ground? Gross square, square footage. footage. Ground gross. square footage. No, so it means uh, gross square footage. Gross. It's, um... Okay. Essentially, it's the area of each floor in a building combined. The gross square footage of the principal structure on Wildflower Drive in Amherst Woods, map 21D, parcel 7, RO outline, residential zoning district, and aquifer re recharge protection overlay district. Um, so we go over the submissions that we have for that matter. Oh, but first, since I, the reason I forgot is because I wasn't there. Uh, site visit. Um, Rob, do you want to? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so site, site visit. Yeah, the site visit um, occurred on Tuesday at five. Miss um, Greenbaum and Miss Marshall are both present, as well as the two applicants. Um, and the lot is, is undeveloped, so there's still trees there. Um, there were stakes marked for the location of where the driveway is going to be off the common driveway. So they have their own individual driveway that connects to a common shared driveway with three other, sorry, two other properties. Um, they also staked out the garage dimensions as well as the main house dimensions and the ADU dimensions. And um, they also had marked located areas where they're gonna tie in for their water and sewer. You can actually see this, um, the connection area sticking out of the ground closest to the main road, Wildflower Drive. Um, and then other than that, Mr. Chair, there's not really much else that happened on that site visit. Uh, Ms. Greenbaum or Ms. Marshall, do you want to add anything? Just that the ground, um, it's level and then drops off quite a bit down to a, I don't know, gully, lower, lower place. So it's my understanding that the structures, I mean, the garage will be at the top basically, and then these other structures will be further down, <laughs> literally down somewhat. Um, so it probably won't be very visible from, from the driveway even. Great. All right, thank you guys. Um, submissions of ZBA, the applicant has submitted um, ZBA FY 2024-14 application forms, management forms, complaint response forms, a project narrative, an email describing the ADU dimensions from January 18th of this year, comments from the tree warden from January 4th, a drainage map, um, driveway easement filed with the Registry of Deeds, Wetlands Resources Review, uh, uh, ZBA 2024-14 site plan review, site plans prepared by Randall Iser, the ADU building and foundation plans, lighting plans, landscaping plans, and a color scheme diagram. There's also staff submission, which is, of course, the project application report. Uh, has there been any public comment received? I am unaware of any. Rob? So I haven't had any written public comments um, submitted, Mr. Chair, but there were. Did you mention the two department comments from 
So one comment from the town engineer and then one comment from the wetlands administrator. It wasn't on the, I, I have them in the packet, but they weren't listed mm -hmm. on the, uh, in the submissions. So sure. I can briefly, that? um, I could briefly mention, do you may go over what they yeah. were, Mr. Chair, or do you want me to just state that they yeah. were submitted? Just state that they were submitted. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, Jason Skeels, town engineer, submit a comment as well as Aaron Jack, the, uh, wetlands administrator, both of them the same date. Which I believe was March twelfth. Great. Um, no other submissions and no other public comments. Um, this is the opportunity for the applicant to make their presentation. Um, who wishes to speak for the applicant? So we have. Let's see. I see Eric Travis in attendance. I will go ahead and send him a panelist invitation. They just have to accept. There we are. Hi. Hi. Just give us your name and, and address and for the record. Good evening. My name is Vivian Addison. This is my husband, Alan Eric Travis, and we currently live at 142B Amherst Road, Pelham, Massachusetts. Great. You can proceed. Two years ago, my family collectively decided to move from our large cities to a smaller town to live closer to each other so we could be an integral part of each other's lives to help support each other with child care, pet care, and also to be close as we, the grandparents, age in place. We purchased a lot in Amherst Woods and together designed a home that was big enough but not too big for my daughter and her spouse and their two and four-year-old children and an ADU that was right size for our needs as grandparents um, the ADU house and garage is planned are modular units built by an Amish company in Pennsylvania. They have mossy green lap siding with charcoal gray standing seam roof, white trim, and they are built in the same cottage style and with the same finishes, except for their front doors, which are different. The ADU is tucked away behind the back of the garage and has its narrow side presenting. So it appears smaller than the main house, which, and it is smaller, which is the tallest of the buildings. By right, we're able to build an ADU that is 50% of the size of the main house with less than a thousand square feet. The ADU we are proposing to build is 57% the size of the main house and is 875 square feet of habitable space, well below the 1,000 square foot limit. So we are requesting a special permit. Thank you. Thank you. I'll pass it. Okay. All right. Any uh, questions from the board? for the applicants. Sarah, Ms. Marshall, you have your hand up. Is that um, just yep. inadvertent? Inadvertent, got it. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to notify the board. I'm having a little bit of internet uh, issues, so I'm going to disconnect my video, and hopefully that'll solve it. All right, thank you. All right. Um, The, uh, the one thing that, that uh, Mr. Wachilla did refer to was uh, the comments from the Department of Public Works as well as the Conservation Commission. Um, they both, the, as, the essence of both of those comments were that there was no um, implications for either, um, for the project, for the, for the water quality or conservation. They wanted to have you include the limits, the uh, borders on the plans and you've done so. So um, you've met with their, requirements, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I don't think they're posing any opposition or concern, state no concern about the, uh, um, the application. Um, I have no, I have no special questions. I think this is, this makes great sense. Um, and I, I, I think it's a great idea to be able to create a, as you call it, a family compound and, uh, and live close to your grandchildren, I mean, really close to your grandchildren and your children. That's, that's wonderful. Um, are there any other comments from people in the, on the board regarding this application? All right. Um, is there any public, Rob, is there, this would be a time for public comment. If the public wishes to comment on this, so indicate by raising your hand or pushing star eight, star nine on your phone. Um, we'll, and when you do comment, please comment to the board. So there is a few hands raised Mr. Chair. The first one was uh, Mandy Joe Haneke. I'm going to go ahead and give him the speaking chair. Hello, can you hear me? 
Yep. Uh, my name is Mandy Jo Haneke, and I live at 26 Foxglove Lane. Um, please note that I'm speaking as a resident of Amherst and an abutter, but not in my capacity as a town councilor, despite what the screen shows. I can't change my name. Um, I am, as a both resident and as an abutter, who will be able to see this project from my backyard and rear house windows, I request that you approve the special permit and do so without delay. The special permit application is reasonable as it does not cause substantial inconvenience to abutters, reasonably protects adjoining premises, and is in harmony with the neighborhood and the master plan. This request for an ADU is before you because the main house is being built to the current needs of the owners and is smaller than many, if not most of the houses in our neighborhood. If the owners had chosen to build a larger primary residence, the proposed ADU would not exceed 50% of the primary residence's habitable GSF. Frankly, we should applaud the owners for building to the size they need, not a size that would make their path for adding an ADU easier, given our need for more affordable housing in Amherst. Denying this request or taking too much time to approve the special permit would only encourage them and future landowners to build larger than needed primary residences in order to have an easier path toward building an ADU. Um, as you know, the ADUs that are less than both 1,000 square feet and 50% are by right without needing a public hearing. So if a special permit takes too long, a landowner can simply obtain a building permit by increasing the habitable GSF of the primary residence. So the potential for simply building larger in order to receive a building permit for an ADU should be taken seriously by the ZBA. Please don't encourage such a practice by denying or delaying the approval of a special permit in this instance. Amherst should be encouraging the building of smaller residences and ADUs, just like this project proposal. Um, we need to encourage projects like this, building two dwelling units on this currently undeveloped one and a half acre flag lot on Wildflower Drive is a great example of encouraging more infill development and smaller dwellings. So I am a loud and clear yes, please approve the special permit for an ADU larger than 50% of the habitable GSF of the primary residence and please do so swiftly. I wanna thank you for your time, but my husband is not here yet. So if you'll just indulge me, he's not able to join because he's picking up our children and his comment, I will be very quickly. His name is David Haneke and he lives with me. Um, he would also like to say, yes, the plans presented seem entirely reasonable in size and scope, especially when compared with the other dwellings in our neighborhood. Um, and while it might not from him necessarily be relevant to your deliberations, he finds that the designs are quite tasteful and he appreciates the care taken in the lighting plan with its emphasis on downlit dark sky compliant warm color temperature lights. Um, he wishes to say um, that the original developers of our neighborhood had taken that amount of care in the lighting plans because our neighborhood is not so compliant. Um, he'll be able to see the new structures from the backyard and he would like to go on record as yes in my backyard. Thanks, and he thanks the ZBA members for the care and attention to these issues and welcomes the applicants to our neighborhood. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, there is, go indicate. there is another hand, uh, Stephen Frazier. I will go ahead and give him the microphone. Mr. Fraser, just give us your name and address for the record, please. Hi, uh, Stephen Fraser. I'm at 10 Wildflower Drive. You may, may proceed. Yes, hi. Uh, yes, my uh, property uh, is adjacent to the access uh, to this uh, development. Um, and I, I have two concerns. One is um, uh, primarily what I will see is a garage and parking. Uh, and so um, my concern is whether there's any uh, design for some kind of screening. Uh, and, and my other concern is, um, <clears throat> although the, um, um, the, the owners do not plan to rent this ADU um, as, a, as a rental unit, uh, my, my concern is that it will eventually eventually become a rental unit. And uh, I would like to know what what kinds of uh, processes are in place to uh, manage that. Thank you, Mr. Fraser. Are there any other public comments? 
There is a public comment from Grace uh, Naiman. Go ahead and give him the microphone. Oh, sorry. Hello, I'm Francisco Quiros. I'm Grace Neiman's husband. And I'm here also. I hope Grace is here. And we're new, new to uh, the idea of an ADU, so we're learning here. Um, but uh, we're curious. Um, we, in the online information, we weren't able to find out about the full size basement they, they plan to do on the ADU. It ha does it have a door going to the outside? Or <clears throat> how are you going to get out of it? Is the rear of the house going to be at the, um, the normal ground level, et cetera? Another question is, um, can you elaborate on the HVAC equipment? Um, the compressor, is it going to be in, in the back of the house, away from us, or where where is it going to be? Uh, we're also concerned about the heavy equipment that's going to be used to install this, uh, and because they're going to have to drive over our, the water line that's underground. So that's another concern. And in the future, if we add an ADU or, or another neighbor on this flag lot adds an ADU, we're, by the way, we're their neighbors, adjacent neighbors, um, how will we resolve any traffic problems that arise? Otherwise, um, we're glad to see new neighbors and we hope this all works out for you. Thank you. Other comments? Please indicate that you wish to speak by raising your hand or pressing star nine on your phone. There is a comment from uh, Kathy Pollard. Ms. Pollard, give us your name and address for the record, please, and uh, you may speak. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, Catherine Pollard, 15 Wildflower Drive, across the street from um, BT Neighbors, New York Development. Um, it sounds like a, a, a wonderful development, and I look forward to you to that. Um, and I'm pleased to hear that everyone is um, um, pleased with the, with your intention to the design. I was wondering about the um, front lot that is to the side and um, uh, in front on Wildflower that is owned by Charlotte Han and Robert W. Cook that has recently been clear cut. I was wondering what the connection is to the um, developing um, um, project that we're talking about now and why it's clear cut and um, if, uh, if, if there is a connection here and if there is a uh, if there's been any um, assessments of the um, erosion and um, the, the, the building which has a stream underneath it together. And that's my, that's my question. So it was a little hard to, a little hard to hear you at the end there. So you, you wondered about the clear cutting and the effect on, this, on, a, on a stream and then what app, after that, I didn't understand you. Can you speak up a little bit? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do the best I can. There is a lot in front. Yep. Yeah, no, no, just the end of your comment is what okay. I could hear. I was, I was curious why that was clear cut if the lot is connected um, to the, the, the owners who are developing behind. And if there was assessments on the watershed of the stream below and um, the potential for the erosion and I'm just wondering why the wood was was cut down, which was actually a habitat for uh, wildlife there and the, the owls are gone. And I was just wondering what the connection is between that lot and uh, behind and why it was clear cut. Got it. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you for your comment, Ms. Pollard. Are Thanks there other comments? The opportunity. Oh, you bet. I'm, I thought you'd finished. Are there other, other public comments? Robert, got anybody else? Okay. So this is the opportunity after public comments, the applicants have an opportunity to respond if they so choose to the, um, to the points raised. Um, if you wish to, um, it's the time to do that. Yes. Um, in, in regards to the last comments regarding the lot that's actually on Wildflower Drive, that is not our lot. It has nothing to do with us. We have not cut down a single tree on our property yet. That is the uh, owned by somebody else. So that's not us. Um, in regards to Francisco's concerns and questions, um, the HVAC equipment will likely be uh, in between the two houses. It, there'll be air source heat pumps. They're very quiet. Um, and your garage, there's a lot of room in garage before your house. So it, we're quite a distance away, but they would, probably will be in between the two houses. The HVAC guy said he needed to come out and actually see the buildings in place to go ahead and do set those. Um, there is a full basement because the land goes like this and then slopes straight down. We have to have a full basement. And our builder said you would be foolish not to have a means of egress from there if you have a full basement. And that'll be on grade. And that 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 will be on grade, but it, it's very much lower and it will face uh, out towards the um, towards the dip, towards the trees. It won't be visible from other other properties. And then I can't remember any other concerns. Oh, uh, in regards- Protecting the water line. Heavy equipment. Oh, the heavy equipment. Yes. Um, when the construction workers do it, they usually put a, a, you know, a ply or something down before the equipment goes over. We're aware that the water line runs about four feet away from the shared driveway. Um, we're, you know, regardless, equipment is going to have to go over that to get into our lot, and that's part of the easement. Um, we will make sure our builder is aware of it. He is actually already aware of it. And they will guard it, protect it as well as can be protected. The town, and we'd ask, we can ask Mr. Mora, the building commissioner. I'm assuming that there are protocols for protection of the of the, the water. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think the first thing is locating them. The contractor will, uh, you know, carefully maneuver their equipment over it. Uh, so you know that contractor should be well aware of how to. Uh, you know, make make it their way into the lot and bring the equipment in safely. Uh, sometimes they played over those areas uh, to protect the, the pipe. Uh, sometimes they're able to avoid it in other ways. I can't remember. Were there other concerns that were addressed that I missed? Uh, you, you can. There are other two other concerns that I don't think you've addressed. One um, is to you, if you wish to address one, is the uh, the screening of the garage and second what if it becomes rental at a later point in time upon sale okay what if it becomes rental if we were to sell the property it's possible it would become rental uh amherst has a process by if you rent a rent a building you have to go through the city of amherst and have a plan on file and we 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 were required to do a plan we have a plan on file already we are not going to rent it <laughs> and if we do, we have to go through the process, just like any other rental property. I'll, I'll have I'll also have either Rob Moore or Rob um, Wachello describe it, but this will become a, um, a, a ADU, and there's certain restrictions on. We have to have a principal owner in the in the main building, and it can, it can be rented. But those will continue. Those restrictions will uh, go with the property, and so it, it won't change its status now of being able to rent. So Rob or Rob, can you? Um, sure. That better than I did. Yeah, and also want to add one more thing that's important too before you can uh, technically um, habitate the ADU. So you have to, so for the rental part, you have to register with the town's rental registration program, which I believe is done. Rob, if I'm correct on this, is it done through the board of? Is it the licensed commissioners who do that, or is it done administratively? 
that's done administratively through inspection services. Okay. And then the other thing, um, so in order for the ADU to be permitted, the property has to be owner occupied in perpetuity. So essentially the owners have to file a deed restriction with the registry of deeds saying that at least one of the buildings is going to be owner occupied at all times, even if they're going to live in both. That's just something they have to file in order to even have the approval to construct the ADU. So that's why it was included as a condition to this special permit and to the previous application as well. So it'll be treated as any other ADU in ours. Yeah, exactly. Um, and as to the screening, um, the way the driveway comes in, the driveway is going to have to go up to the garage. There's, there's no way to screen the front of the garage because that's driveway access. Um, the house itself is set back behind the garage and down lower. Um, oh, so, you know, we're planning to, there is gonna be a little bit of a fence, but it will be visually, it'll be fairly open. I guess we could plant some shrubs in the front there. We'd be happy to, except there's, there's driveway there. Also, there's the cut, there's the part that you turn around in. So, I mean, we could we could do some in the front there. It's it's kind of difficult though. You you know you can't plant on asphalt. Last point um, is that a questioner raised about a commenter raised about um, watershed assessments, and that was done by the Concom and the, and the uh, um, town Jason Skeels in the town, and it, there's no impact upon the. What, they found that there's no impact upon the watershed. Mr. Chair, I thought that was that concern was raised in connection with the other lot that was cleared, which doesn't belong to these. To I, the thought, I thought that um, I may maybe, have, I maybe I misread, but I yeah. thought, Mr. Wachilla, can you? Yeah, I'll clarify. Um, so basically, the comments from uh, Mr. Skeels, the town engineer, and uh, Ms. Jock, the uh, wetlands administrator, were that. They don't encroach on any uh, resource wetland resource areas or water bodies, but towards the back of their property, it does kind of go down to this valley, which has a mound behind it, and then that goes up and down into a water stream behind it. So they're pretty far away, and they have this natural drainage area at the back of their property. So that's basically what the comments said, and that neither one of them had any concerns from a stormwater perspective. So I think we're Ms. Marshall, I think we're both right. <laughs> well, I, I, I thought you were right. <clears throat> one of the comments from a me member of the public just minutes ago yeah. was about, and I thought that was about where all the trees have been cut down. So a different oh, watershed different. issue. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. All right. Dif different property. Okay. Yeah. Right. But, but the implication of this, this application is that it has no effect on groundwater. Uh, well, no effect on wetlands. I wetlands. guess is the biggest concern. Yeah. Yep. On wetlands. All right. Any other questions or comments from board members regarding this? Any questions for the applicant? If not, I'd entertain a motion that we clip, that we um, move to a public meeting on ZBA 2024-14 while keeping the public hearing open in case we need to gather additional information. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion to move to public to move to a public meeting while keeping the public hearing open. Chair votes aye. Mr. White. Aye. Ms. Marshall. Aye. Ms. Greenbaum. Aye. Aye. Great. Motion carries. Four to nothing. Um, this is the time when we debate the public. Um, special permit application. Um, my, my impression of this is that it's a well thought out um, use of an ADU and use of space and they, uh, there's minimal disruption to the neighborhood. I think many of the questions that have been raised by members of the public are legitimate and I think they have been, uh, there's an answer for most of them, I think satisfactorily from the, uh, in the project and from the, the prospective builders and the owners of the land. Uh, so I'm, I'm disposed to uh, approve this. I'd like to know if other people have other thoughts. 
concerns or questions regarding other board members have thoughts, concerns, or questions regarding this? I just want to say I think it's a great use of a of a tough property the way yeah. it you know declines so precipitously. I think uh, yeah, really. I didn't get to the site, but but from the map, it's a pretty dramatic drop off at the rear of the property. So not a lot of glad, glad it can be used. <laughs> not a lot of buildable space there. Yeah. All right. If there are no other questions or concerns regarding this, uh, I'd, I'd like to first. Go over the conditions um, from the draft application report. Look at those, and then based on those conditions, I think we can make our um, we can make findings depending upon whether the conditions are approved. The first condition in the draft applica project application report is standards. It's Mr. Wachilla. Your hand is up. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. So I do have the conditions up. But I wanted to clarify on a question that was brought up by Mr. Fraser earlier about. Um, the garage being in view from the street. I just want to also emphasize that the owners are very constrained on where they can put these buildings on the property because the flies part is the part closest to the road and the driveway. So if they were to push it any further back, they wouldn't be able to do it because most of the property is just that slope going down the, towards the valley. So to move the garage further back would be very difficult to do. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, great. Thanks, Rob. Put the conditions back up. Number one is pretty much standard. It's got to be built as to, to uh, site plans. Two deals with the, um, the fact that this is going to be um, a deed restriction and at least the, the, the principal owner will have to live in any of the ADU or the principal residence. The owner will have to live in one of the two units. No more than two adults can live at the ADU at all times. All exterior lighting must be designed to be downcast and uh, dark sky compliant according to the ZBA rules and regs. Street numbers shall be clearly marked. Parking shall occur on surface, improved surfaces only. Trash receptacles shall be screened. Uh, if they wish to rent out one, they have to, one unit. If the uh, owner wishes to rent out one unit, they have to um, have, abide by the rental um, management system of town. If an active rental registration permit is in place, they have to have an annual uh, complaints and violation log report. Uh, there's a restriction on, on the use of, or not a restriction, but sodium chloride if used shall be used at a minimum and the base ratio, giving a base ratio of one part salt to 10 parts sand. Fertilizers, pesticides, and other leachable lawn and garden chemicals shall be used in accordance with lawn care regulations of the Massachusetts um, Pesticide Board. Um, there, in the, pro, the draft application report, there was a question about whether we should be considering um, some of the restrictions on or can, um, on on design reviews, color scheme dividing, single type. I'm not inclined to want. I'm not inclined to deal with that in in this application because we're looking at a a, a standalone home. But um, I'd leave that up to other board members. But it doesn't seem to me to be particularly applicable at this point. Mr. Mr. Chair. Yep. They did. The applicants did also submit a sheet with the. Colors. It looks close enough, but that's that's my my um, opinion and my. Yeah, no, no. I'm just saying yeah. they have they have. I think they've satisfied much of this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we need to do anything more. Right. Miss Greenbaum. I'm curious about number three about two adults. Does that preclude minor children down the line if? For instance, somebody does rent that building that's not a member of the family who does have minor children or if a minor if one of the children gets big. And I don't know. You know, I don't know the answer to that, Ms. Greenbaum. Uh, Mr. Mora, is that, it just says no more than two adults. It doesn't seem to have a limitation on if, a, if there's a child or a minor in addition to the two adults. But I don't sure. think it does, um, but you know, I actually, after reading that, uh, I'm wondering if that's necessary. And I think yeah. it should probably follow the the uh, language in the bylaw for all ADUs that, you know, is um, related to the number of unrelated residents. Yeah, three, of three. Yeah. Of three. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure if there's any reason why that condition should be worded that way, referring to two adults. Was that something from, did, 
Did the applicant include that? Wish that to be the case? Well, so the applicant included that in their uh, narrative, and so that's why I put it in there. But Mr. Mora did bring up a good point that okay. Condition 3 should be changed. So it should say no more than three unrelated adults, just so it matches the language in the bylaw. And I think that'd probably be the most appropriate way to do it. And I guess this is one place where we get the reaction from the applicant. Is that um, acceptable to the applicant? You're right. Kind of, yep, you're fine with it? Yes. I'm not having any more kids and I'm only gonna live with him, but yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mr. Go Chair, Ms. Marshall. Yeah, I would just note that this same condition was in the permit we just granted earlier this evening. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I didn't pick it up at that one either. Yeah. Uh, raised. Well, if there's just if there's some like a standard list that Rob's pulling from, maybe. <laughs> Delete that one. You may want to go back to the, the, the just what's in the bylaw in the future. Ms. Greenbaum? No, no, my hand is still up. No, I, I just wanted to bring it up because you never know. This this um, permit is going into the Registry of Deeds and it is presumably in effect in perpetuity. And so you don't want to mess people up down the line if they want to sell the house. And yep. it has restriction on it that might make it difficult. Yes. All right. Um, with that amendment uh, to the conditions, are there any other changes or members wish? If not, I would entertain a motion that we approve the conditions in block as amended by the uh, permission for up to three adult unrelated adults. Is there so a second? moved. Is there a second? Second. I've been moved and seconded. Any discussion? There's no discussion. The vote occurs on the motion to approve the conditions and block as amended. Uh, the chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum? Aye. The conditions are approved. What was four to nothing? Conditions are approved. The uh, next is the uh, making the findings we have to make under um, section five. Generally, that it is it generally, uh, I think, it, not generally, it totally complies with the requirements of section five. General requirements for an ADU, dimensional requirements are all met. Parking requirements are met. Um, design standards are met and the, even the uh, driveway is at the narrowest is, is uh, 12 feet but uh, it, the minimum exit is 10 uh, minimum feet wide for one-way use is 10 18 feet to it and it's 12 feet it's the most narrow part so that's fine um, the design standards are also met so i make i think we can make the findings that the um, the application comports with everything needed for an ADU in terms of section five. Mr. Chair? Yep. The ADU is more than 50% of the GSF of the principal residence. So we just have to explicitly that's, permit. Yeah, that's, that's, right. the reason yeah, that's the reason they're getting the right. special permit. Yep, right. is because it exceeds that. Yes. Right. Yep, and I think that's stated in the, um, in the, yeah, it's stated in the in the description of the the special permit before us is that it's there because it's fifty percent, it exceeds fifty percent. So that, so unless there's any objections on the findings, we'll move on to the the, the um, findings under ten point three eight. Under ten point three eight zero and three eight one, generally deal with um, suitability for the neighborhood. Um, it's a residential neighborhood, and this is a further residential use. 10.382, 10.383, 8.5, 8.7 uh, generally deals with nuisances caused by a host of, of um, different mat, different ways, pollution, noise, odor, dust. Uh, we don't think, I don't think that it does any of that. It doesn't uh, create a nuisance 
10.384 is there's appropriate facilities provided for the operation of the proposed use. It, it'll have um, town water and town sewer. 10.386 deals with parking sign regulations. Um, they, this is dealt with in the conditions, requirements of section 7.1. 10.387 provides for convenient, safe vehicular and pedestrian, pedestrian traffic. Um, the proposed parking layout and driveway do not present any issues to vehicular and pedestrian movement on the site. In fact, it looks to be pretty well designed. 10.388 is not applicable. 10.389 uh, provides for adequate methods of disposal and or storage that they have done that with the appropriate facilities for trash storage. 10.390 is not applicable. 391 is not applicable. Or 10.391 is uh, deals with only removal of trees within the project area and where the water and sewer line will be installed. No other landscapes or uh, scenic features will be disturbed. Uh, so I think they meet the requirements. We can make the findings under 10.391. 10.392 provides adequate landscaping and screening of adjacent buildings, uses and provisions of street trees. Uh, the applicant seems to have tree covered as best as can for most of the, uh, for almost all of the, the structures. Uh, and the detailed landscaping plan includes landscape maintenance and care. 10.393 deals with uh, provisionals providing protection of adjacent properties, the intrusion of light. The, compl the uh, application complies with the ZBA rules regarding downcast and um, dark sky compliant lighting. 10.394 is not applicable. 395 deals with disharmony in respect to the terrain, use scale, and architecture of existing buildings. This doesn't seem to be out of, uh, at all out of uh, uh, scope with what's in the neighborhood. 10.396 provides for screening of storage areas, loading docks, trash receptacles will be screened in the attached garage. 10.397 is not applicable and 398 the proposal is in harmony with the general purpose and interests of this bylaw and the goals of the master plan. I mean, it does that by providing housing for um, uh, fam two families in an in a innovative and a thoughtful way in a residential neighborhood. Um, so unless anybody disagrees with any of those findings for both the 10.39, uh, 38 and 39 findings, as well as the findings under the ADU, I would entertain a motion that we approve the um, approve ZBA 2024-14 request for a special permit under section 5.0112A of the zoning bylaw for accessory dwelling unit over 50% of habitable GSF of the principal structure on Wildflower Drive in Amherst Woods um, with, with conditions and that we close the public hearing on this matter. I think I've covered all Mr. of Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. White. Uh, just real quick, um, yeah. from what I'm seeing, uh, I think you might have just done it by mistake, but 10.394, you said it was not applicable. Um, it is applicable, but not an issue. Okay. Hopefully. So that was the only note I wanted to make. Just you know, I might, have, I might have struck it out when I, oh, that's right. You're exactly right. It would, it's it's not, a, not, not a problem. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, no, I just wanted, just for the record. Good. We got that straightened away. All right, so the motion before us is to approve the special permit with conditions, and then we've made the findings and then we close the public hearing. So moved. So moved. All right, any discussion on that motion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion to approve the special permit and to close the public hearing. Chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye, if I can see the puppy. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Marshall? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum. Aye. All right. Motion is approved. Four to nothing. Uh, vote requires four votes. You got it. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you Bye. very much. Thank you very much. Next order of business is the town of Amherst. Um, ZBA 2024-15 request for a special permit under section 3.231. 3 of the zoning bylaw to construct structures on the front prone, <laughs> flood prone conservancy district, including bridges, boardwalks at 191 West Pomeroy Lane, former Hickory Ridge Golf Course map, 19D parcel 10, residential neighborhood RN and FPC flood prone conservancy zoning districts. Um, there was not a site plan for this matter. There is submissions, I'll get those together here. 
Submissions received have been ZB for ZBA 2024-15, application form, a management plan, site plans um, from August 10th, 2023, sheet G1, L101, L102, C100, C200, um, sheet 300, C300, C400, C500, C sheet L501. Uh, these are all site plans. Uh, ZBA FY 2024 structure location plans, a list of structures, a bridge railing, sam bridge railing sample, a shade structure example, and Hickory Ridge zoning map. Uh, they've requested waivers of a traffic impact statement, a lighting plan, and application fees. And I think we've included all the items that are included in our packet. Rob, if I'm wrong, is there anything that I've missed? No, I think you covered it all, Mr. Chair. I think we got it all. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, for this, this is an application from the town of Amherst. Uh, who's going to speak for the town? Um, I could get sit, I could start off with uh, some background information, and then I'm going to hand over to to Mr. Zomek to kind of uh, go more into detail with the actual structures that are going in the FPC. So, basically, the town of Amherst is trying to construct a series of structures, including bridges boardwalks and a shade structure at the say at the former Hickory Ridge golf course, which is now going to be a um, trail network that is going to be pretty extensive. Um, it's also the same site where the solar project is going to go, but this specific petition is just focusing on approving those structures that are located in the FPC. And if you don't mind, Mr. Chair, I'm actually going to share my screen and show this map yep. actually shows the entire property right here and each number is the different location of a specific type of structure so for example number one is going to be a vehicle and pedestrian bridge um, and I just also want to note that most of the project if not all of this project is actually located in the flood prone conservancy zoning district so everything you see here with a number so where my cursor is it kind of goes out this way all the way around is the FPC so in order for the town to start construction on these structures, they need the special permit in order to move ahead with it. And I also want to mention that this project did receive approval from the planning board for site plan review for the use. And it did receive a um, order of conditions from the conservation commission as well for the structures and for the trail network. So uh, Dave Zomek is going to go into more detail of what each structure is going to be um and where they're going to go and uh dave you can take it away sure uh, thank you rob and thank you mr chair dave zomak assistant town manager for the town of amherst can everybody hear me okay yeah yep. um, I, great i think as all of you know this has been a project that the town has been working on for a few years um, as rob indicated there are a number of things going on in this property our focus tonight is really to talk with you about the structures in the fpc but just to round out what Rob said, uh, you know, there is a 26 acre, the, the property itself is 150 acres. There's 26 acres of solar that is already permitted on the site. And then as part of the, the overall project master plan, um, our goal as the town uh, from the start was to connect some of the neighborhoods to the north up on East Hadley Road uh, with the village center uh, where the new roundabout is at Pomeroy and West Street. And so uh, working with town staff, working with uh, state agencies, um, we have uh, put together a trail plan uh, indicated in red. And what we, we call in the lower left-hand uh, uh, part of the map is a loop trail. And then the north-south trail, which goes all the way from the former clubhouse, all the way up to the edge of our property in the upper right of your screen, which will ultimately connect to uh, East Hadley Road. Thank you, Rob. Um, so tonight's discussion is focused on the eight structures that are indicated in this map. Um, as Rob noted, uh, they are listed over in the red box uh, to the left, and perhaps I could just go through them very quickly. Um, we do want to note, uh, as Rob did, that the, the, the project itself has received um, appropriate permits and, and approvals from the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. Um, we are well aware of the uh, history and current status of the Fort River. We understand that um, 
uh, from time to time. The Fort River does over top its uh, its banks, um, and many uh, trail systems like this across the country, across the world, for that matter, um, occasionally flood. So we are designing these trails to do exactly that. They will uh, occasionally overtop. Um, we think the profile of the pro of the uh, improvements is uh, very minimal in in the floodplain, and we've designed it uh, not unlike this will be a, essentially a six foot wide crushed stone trail, not unlike the cart paths that have been out there for the last sixty five years uh, that were used for golf courts to to move across uh, the uh, the course itself, and those were overtopped with flooding, just like these trails will be from time to time. So why don't I start very quickly? Um, on the lower left, we have the Loop Trail. Um, all of these trails will meet um, uh, most uh, ADA standards. Um, and as I said, they'll be crushed stone, relatively small improvement uh, with uh, a modest number of benches and appropriate kiosks uh, at the trailhead and parking lot. So number one is a small uh, combination bridge that will allow uh, uh, small vehicles to move, uh, to maintain the loop trail, to move to the west, and it'll also double uh, function as the uh, getting over a small wetland area there for the, the people who participate in this, um, using this trail. Uh, number two is a small raised boardwalk, again, low profile. Um, that will not, it's so low that it will not have railings. It is not required to have railings. Uh, number three is a pedestrian bridge. Again, these are these are these structures are only there because they're going over wetlands. Again, all approved by the Conservation Commission. Structure four is an existing bridge that'll eventually be rehabbed. That is a bridge that has been there for 60 plus years uh, and functioned uh, historically to get uh, golfers and golf carts over the Fort River. Likewise, uh, bridge number five is existing. Um, it is a bridge uh, that will be improved um, by the Pure Sky Solar Company for the building of their solar uh, facility. And we will use it. This is number five, Rob. This, uh, this will be used, uh, this will double once the solar company is uh, done uh, constructing their, their facility. Uh, it'll then be open to pedestrians as part of our trail system. Uh, moving on to the east over toward uh, uh, West Street, uh, bridge number six, again, is a very low profile, uh, simple bridge. These are very simple bridges, you know, 10 feet, 12 feet long over a tributary of the Fort River. Um, and then uh, the seventh structure uh, will be a small raised boardwalk to bring us up to grade the uh, Rob can point us toward the access over to West Street. We will be picking up a um, sewer access uh, above number seven, and that is a road, an existing road used by the DPW to monitor a sewer uh, pumping station. And we'll be picking that up to get pedestrians, users of the trail, hikers, bikers over to West Street, and they could go to Crocker Farm School, they could go to the Village Center to the south. The last structure. Um, and actually, this is one that we don't currently have funding for, is way back in the western portion of the property, kind of between number one and three. It's not numbered, but it is right, that little red dot just to the right of where your cursor is right there. That is proposed to be a small, uh, simple um, pavilion structure to get people out of the shade, maybe have a sandwich, something like that in the future. So those are the eight structures. Um, Again, low profile, um, uh, built, uh, solidly built to withstand some overtopping from time to time uh, by floodwaters. And um, I think I'll stop there and take questions. So the issue that's before us is just, is this, are the seven or the eight with the potential eighth structure? Those are the questions. That's the special permit application we have before us is for the construction of those eight items, correct? Correct. Yep. And, you know, our hope tonight is to to have the the the, um, the zoning board find that, you know, the structures do not interfere with the Fort River and its natural flooding processes. Um, again, 
uh, very minimal structures, uh, for the most part at grade or low profile. The Conservation Commission has reviewed this planning board and found that those structures are appropriate for this kind of trail. And no other structures are planned at this time, obviously in the floodplain, in the FPC. I know my fellow board members know that we generally defer uh, judgments about um, floodplain management, uh, stormwater runoff and other uh, flood management to the expert commissions, the CONCON commission, even though it's, and even though it's in our uh, required findings, we generally defer to their knowledge. On those things. You've got that order of conditions already from them, correct? Yes. Could I also ask, ask the chair, um, uh, Mr. Mora, I know is here and as building commissioner, he has also been part of the planning for this and looked over our plans for the structures. And I just wanted to defer to him if I missed anything in my remarks. Uh, no, I don't have anything to add, thanks. Ms. Marshall, your hand is up. Yes, so just two hours ago, Dave and I were in a different meeting hearing about how a bridge at Cherry Hill Golf Course gets washed downstream several times a year uh, and what, how, what an expense and a nuisance it is to retrieve it <laughs> and get it reinstalled. So could you, you said a, a little bit ago, Dave, that these should withstand, these structures, proposed structures should withstand overtopping. Is there, can you elaborate? I mean, is that when there is flooding, this is slow? I mean, it's slow, it's uh, the, the bridges, the whatever abutments or, or you know, foundations they have aren't gonna be undercut mm -hmm. or? Sure, that's a really, <laughs> that's a really, uh, through the chair, is that okay if I answer that, yes, Mr. Yeah, chair? Absolutely. Um, excellent question. Well, first off, the, the structure up at Cherry Hill Golf Course, I'm not sure I would really characterize as a bridge. It is a, it is, um, it, you know, it, 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 it's something that the town placed there some years ago. It is, there is nothing firmly holding that piece of those pieces of wood even onto, uh, they're, they're just flat on the ground. There's no concrete. There's nothing holding that structure which again is a minimal structure so every time it does flood um basically the the uh the water carries that structure away so these bridges are specifically designed to hold their place um in the wetland uh in the wetland complex that they're a part of the boardwalks the small boardwalks that we're proposing will actually be um um built uh, with what are called helical or helical piers that are basically screwed into the ground. And so these have been designed by engineers and designers to stay in place and withstand, you know, certain forces, uh, you know, uh, uh, like flooding water. So the structures we're proposing uh, have just been designed in the last 12 months. And I just contrast that with kind of a big piece of wood up in North Amherst that needs to be improved. In fact, uh, when I was before JCPC, to some degree, we should probably design something similar at Cherry Hill that is gonna withstand those forces of a, a small stream uh, like the one at Cherry. But these are specifically designed to stay in place. Again, a catastrophic flood or a, you know, a, a ice shearing event 20 years from now, I don't think any of us, you know, those are catastrophic events. We can't engineer for those, but these bridges and structures are engineered to and designed to last. Thank you. Ms. Greenblatt. This question I have for David is not really under our purview, but I'm interested to find out how you can have wheelchair and walker accessible sidewalks made out of crushed stone. Uh, Mr. Lomack, go ahead. Sure, and I may defer to Mr. Mora on that if possible, but um, we are designing these, well, why, if you could, Rob, could you jump in there? 
Sure. So this is a, a, a base of material that's a pretty small aggregate that locks together really tight. So um, it gets placed uh, uh, very level. So there's, there's very little cross pitch. There's um, no inconsistencies in the way that it's uh, uh, graded uh, at the surface. And then it's rolled for compaction and the material is designed to compact really well. Uh, from time to time, it will need maintenance uh, as years go on and the, the conservation staff will watch for those areas. But um, we, we find that the, the hard pack base uh, does hold up really well. And there are no tree roots that would interfere as Amity Street, for example, and other places where we put uh, asphalt the tree roots tend to rise up. The, the nice thing I might say about this is, frankly, if tree roots do interfere, uh, it's a little easier to get at this and, and remove those tree roots. Um, if anyone has been to the Conti Trail over on Moody Bridge Road in Hadley, if you think about a good portion of that structure is um, crushed stone, uh, this fine crushed stone, as, as uh, Rob indicated, that is essentially our goal. There are also some pathways at the uh, Emily Dickinson Museum here on Main Street that are built in with the same technique. I don't know if all the ones at Emily Dickinson meet all the ADA standards that we are going to try to meet, but that is our goal. And from time to time, they, they, they will be overtopped by water and will need some maintenance. I did want to add the initial construction of these trails is being funded by uh, state grants, uh, CDBG funding and some CPA funding uh, added to that uh, to, to, to meet the budget. Ms. Greenbaum, I was going to add exactly what uh, the point that Mr. Zomek made. I have uh, been over to the Silvio Conte trail and I've pushed a wheelchair around that trail. And with that um, material they use, it's pretty easy. So it, 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 it does a good job uh, keeping a pretty- Thank you, I've done that too, but I didn't know it was the same material. Yeah, it works pretty well. Other questions? Um, can we put the map up for just a second? Yeah, sorry about that. Just give me one second. That's all right. This is not directly in our purview. I'm just trying to understand it. I remember when we approved this, uh, the solar plan, and then subsequent to that, there was a, a public um, input gathered by the uh, by the town on the uses of this, the site. And I was, wasn't sure if the parking lot, the old golf course parking lot is going to remain there, it's going to be changed. That will help a lot for access to people who don't live in the area who want to come there. Can you talk a little bit about parking availability for this uh, site? Sure, and, and this was um, very good questions and the planning board and conservation commission all, all ask similar questions. So there is the, Rob is circling the existing parking lot and this, the uh, darker structure to the left, to the west is the um, former clubhouse. So in short, our plan is to bring the clubhouse down. Uh, 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 we are working on trying to get funding for that. Um, it is, it cannot be reused. It, it was it was uh, when we received the property, it was already in terrible shape. And we wasn't we cannot, a very good clubhouse to begin with. Yeah, we, we cannot <laughs> reuse that. Um, but then the parking lot itself, uh, we the town staff have developed a plan to to use the parking lot to support the trail system and potentially future uses of the frontage. Um, but in the short term, uh, the eastern part of the parking lot will be used for parking. We'll try to we're going to be using some uh, some split rail fencing, some of uh, the Jersey barriers to to try to create some buffer between the visiting public and the um, the old clubhouse. Mm -hmm. And so they'll folks visitors will park on the right hand side of the parking lot you see before you. They'll enter through that easternmost um, access way there, and they'll also exit there. And we will kind of discontinue, except for emergency purposes, the front. Uh, uh, circle uh, entrance there. And so people will disembark from their cars there. Uh, there'll be a nice kiosk uh, welcoming folks with a trail map and then off folks go to either do the loop trail or the north south trail um, or both. Or if they just want to explore the property and go fishing or fly a kite or do some bird watching, whatever they might do. 
We have not decided on re, uh, what ultimately the repurposing of the area of the clubhouse will be. As folks uh, know, I uh, working with the town manager, we've talked about some other uses there. Potentially uh, a South Fire Station could go there, potentially affordable housing, potentially uh, some other town uses. If we in the future look for perhaps a new senior center site or a community center site uh, yet to be determined, but we do have some, some potential uses on the frontage. <laughs> One last question. Again, this is not within our purview, but it's for my information. Um, aside from off the trails, uh, do you get, can you get access to the river um, through, by just walking through the, the grass? Or is it, uh, is it are you going to allow people to walk off, off the trails? Or are they restricted to the trails? Or are, is it uh, going to be um, passable to walk through the um, whatever that landscape will be? Um, yeah, no, another good question. Obviously, the solar area, the 26 acres right. that you can see a faint outline in grayish black, the central array is, you know, right up the middle. Uh, yeah. And then there's the western array, those will be fenced, so there'll be no access there. But the rest of the property will be town property, some of it will be conservation land, some of it will be held in general by the town. And um, we will encourage people to be on the trails. But like other conservation areas, if people are intrepid and want to um, want to go fishing or or want to go bird watching or, you know, want to run in the grass or whatever they can, we yeah. will eventually be mowing some of the fields and keeping some of those fields in early successional habitat. Mm -hmm. It's a very complex property with a number of rare and endangered species. So not unlike uh, other applicants, the town needs to apply to the state to get permission for some of our management goals. So we are the applicant, we are, we are regulated by the state in what we do on in, in and on the river, as well as in the adjacent uh, fields and forests. So um, we're working on a plan with the state for that. But yes, people will be able to, if they're willing to brave uh, some ticks and some poison ivy, people will be able to walk around and enjoy. Great. Thank you. Well, I, I love the notion of uh, using this area for uh, public access. It makes a lot of sense. And the Fort River can be a real, could be a real boon uh, for the area. Kids can, use, kids can learn how to fish there, explore. It would be great. So uh, I, I like the, uh, the trail plan. It makes a lot of sense. Um, other questions, comments uh, before we go to public comment? If not, um, Rob, do we have anybody that wishes to speak from the public? So we only have two atten two attendees. Um, neither one of them have their hand raised. Just a reminder, if you want to make a public comment, use your raise hand function or press star nine. Uh, nope. All right. Any other, one last time, uh, opportunity for board members or for the, top, the applicant, the town to speak before we go to public meeting. I would entertain a motion that we move to a public meeting um, while keeping the public hearing open in case we need to gather additional information on this matter. Do I have such a motion? So uh, moved. That's moved in nine, <laughs> I hear two, so that's a second. So we've got a motion and second. Um, any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion to go to a public meeting while keeping the public hearing open. Chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Aye. The vote is four to nothing, we're, and it carries. Uh, so now we're in the public meeting section. This is where we uh, can deliberate and go through findings and conditions. Are there any general thoughts from board members on the application? I generally am very supportive. Um, and I would move to, I would move into the conditions right away. If you look at the project application report, there's two conditions. The first is uh, pretty much boilerplate, meaning it has to be built to site plans, which are specifically enumerated here. And the second is that the order of conditions for the trail system be in full effect, and that we, um, we adopt 
the uh, order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. So we we uh, defer to the judgment of, the, of a more uh, expert body on this, but we incorporate it in our in our finding in our uh, conditions. So I would entertain a motion. Does anybody have any additions to that? Rob, you have your hand up. So I just want to clarify, Mr. Chair, the uh, third plan that um, is considered the approved plan, the structure location plan. So that was the map that we were just looking at. I was going to make an edit to that to include the eighth structure on that plan so it can be identified. In that case, the structure is the giant uh, pavilion shade structure. It was left out, but it will be included. All right. So the motion is to approve these conditions with the change to adopt to add the eighth structure. Yes. I have a question. Yeah, I'm sorry. Marshall. Yep. Yeah. So just maybe so I understand uh, condition two, the most recent order of conditions that is from the Conservation Commission. Yes. Yes. That, could that be specified right there? Because these are also conditions. So it's. Oh, but that's, you know, I think Ms. Marshall order of conditions is a term of art that apply that comes from the Conservation Commission. They're the only ones who issue order of conditions. Yes. I think that's right. Okay. Okay. Yep. And basically, okay. um, you know, if the order conditions were to be updated, um, then, yeah. you know, they're not restricted to just one specific permit file number with the DEP. They can just apply the most recent ones on the site. Right. Thank you. But good, mm -hmm. good question. All right. Um, do I have a motion to approve the condition, the two conditions with the additional um, map alteration for, for, for um, I guess, structure eight? So I'm moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the conditions and it's approval in bonk, in block. Chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Vote is four to nothing. The conditions are approved in block, in bonk. And, uh, you know, I've got that wrong. They're approved in block. So this is, I'm having a hard time tonight, guys, but um, I'm, not, I'm not at 100%. Um, next is, we have to make some, we have, we are required as a special permit granting authority that um, we have to find that such factors as those listed in 3.229 do not appreciably affect the water or table or quality. In 3.229, there are several um, items which the staff has identified as um, that, the, that the application does not adversely affect the water table or the water quality. Those include drainage, elevation of buildings, extent of paving, and storage of chemicals and other hazardous substances. Adequately, adequacy of sewage it does not apply. Control of erosion sedimentation does not apply. Location of equipment does not apply. Storage of buyout or buoyant material, not buyout, buoyant material does not apply. And the effect of fill does not apply. So I would find I would like to move forward by saying that the um, the application meets drainage, elevation, extent of paving, and storage of chemicals and other hazardous substances factors, which the special permit granting authority must find. Next, on the, the um, section three point three two zero, it's just these structures do not alter the natural course of water. That seeks to restore them to the natural state. It looks to me like that's exactly what these, the, to the extent these structures um, impinge or a, a bound water, they're not there to alter its course. Um, and it seems to me that the, this application does not alter natural water courses. Section 3.321 structures associated with this are allowable uses. Um, and accessory uses will not be located within the flood prone conservancy district without special permit. And that's what we're here for tonight. So um, I think the, the findings under section three, we can make under section six, all well, the dimensional findings, um, either they do not apply or they meet the dimensional requirements. I think I, I don't think I've skipped any there. 
And then findings under 10.38 and 389, um, 381 and 382, it's suitably located in the neighborhood. It means exactly what we would we want to do with this area in this, in this neighborhood. 382, 383, 385, and 387. Generally, does it create nuisance by various sources? It does not. 384 doesn't apply. 386 doesn't apply. 387, um, does it, it's, this is all, it provides um, safe vehicular uh, and pedestrian movement, especially with the uh, large parking area there. 388 and 389 do not apply. 390 is it's, uh, protection from flood hazards. That's a, the proposal is use, utilizing natural drainage and seeks to increase impervious areas. Flood hazards would not be an issue for any large structure or buildings, but um, these, we have no large structure or building in this case. So I think we meet 390, 391. Uh, protects unique, important, historic, or scenic features. It's designed to do that. It's in harmony with the other, uh, the, the other features and natural uh, layout of the land. 392 um, does not apply. 393 does not apply. 394 dealing with um, impact on steep slopes and wetlands. Um, we really have to, I think we have to defer to the CONCOM on this, but the site is located within a flood prone uh, conservancy district within the 100 foot plain uh, will be in harmony with this going to be in harmony with the environment. Uh, 395, the proposal does not create disharmony with respect to terrain and even modest structures are not going to be uh, creating disharmony with the, 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 the public area, public access area. Uh, 396 does not apply. 397 um, it's, it provides adequate green space for recreation. That's what it's all about. This, uh, the whole area is planned for that. And 398 it's in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw as well as the master plan. Um, it's improving the Amherst trail system and recreation and natural corridors. So um, I'm prepared to, first of all, if there's any discussion regarding those findings, I'd listen to them now. And if it's not, I'd be prepared to entertain a motion to accept the findings under, um, to make the findings required of us under section three, under section six, um, and under section 10.38 and 3.9. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Uh, is there a second? Second. Yeah. All right, it's moved and seconded. Any discussion? I don't miss a green bomb. You have your hand up. Did I miss yes, that? Yes, I do. A typo in 10.380. I think it should be C O M P L E. Complements. Sorry, providing recreation for the residents. The complimentary, it's C M P L E, not comp P L I. Complimentary. And the very first finding. Ten point three eight zero. Yeah. The petition. At least this is the one I have from the packet. Did he read the same thing? No, we got the same one. You got the same. One. Under the this staff petition complements the, the surrounding residential uses. It should be C O M P L E. Complementary. Oh, I did. Spelling. No. I said type ball. I yep. was thinking. Uh, so, I, <laughs> all right, good catch. Noted. I, I had that written down. Thank you. We'll uh, amend the motion to allow staff to make technical and conforming changes. Mm -hmm. uh, and such as this, if caught. All right, so the motion before us is to approve, is to make the findings required under 10.38 and the other sections that previously listed and to make the change identified by Ms. Greenbaum. Do I have such a motion? I think we, so did that. I think I, we already did it, right? So yeah. we already did, yeah. discussion? Yep. So the vote occurs on adopting the findings. Chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Findings are, we make the findings. So we've made the findings, we've made our conditions. So now the, the matter before the board is the adoption of the, of the special permit. So I would entertain a motion to adopt the special, to approve the special permit. Um, special permit FY 2024-15 with conditions. Um, and to close the public hearing on that matter. Do I have such a motion? So moved. 
Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All set. Chair votes aye. Mr. White. Aye. Ms. Greenbaum. Aye. Ms. Marshall. Aye. The vote is 4-0. Sufficient vote for the passage of the special special permit application. Congratulations, you got it. It looks like a great project. I look forward to its completion and and using it. Um, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We really appreciate it. I I think we'll certainly be, you know, we'll be under construction in four to six weeks. It'll take much of wow. the spring and a good portion part of the summer to get it done, but we hope to maybe cut a ribbon in late summer, early fall. Well, let us know. We've twice acted on this uh, this piece of property and we'd like to see it, uh, like to see the fruition of our work. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and your consideration of the, of the application. Good. Thank you. Thank you for your work too, Mr. Zyman. Um, the next order of business is ZBA FY 2019-06, Antonio Marquez Diaz, our, who operates Mexicalito, to satisfy condition six in which a new business owner shall present to the board for review and approval at a public meeting, an updated business, an updated management plan, and any other information necessary to confirm that the use is operating within the scope of the special permit. Um, submissions to us include a management plan, um, a, a description from the applicant of the the business model, a previous uh, special permit from, uh, when, uh, when, from when Jake's was um, granted a special permit FY 2019-06. Um, Jake, Jake's was a previous uh, occupant of that business, that location. We have a business, a seating plan from Cisco's Cafe, which I think is, is uh, gonna be the operational plan for this building. We have a lighting plan as well from that time, and we have a, two renderings of signs uh, for um, how the new signage will look. Is there anything else that we've gotten, uh, Rob, in terms of submissions? Um, did you mention the existing floor plan, Mr. Chair, that was yes. submitted? Okay, yep. so yep. And then there's also the conditions from ZBA FY 2019-06 that were included as well. Yep. But other than that, you did cover everything else. Okay. Um, who's here for um, the applicant? Is it Mr. Diaz? Yep. So I am going to promote them to a panelist right now. Mr. Diaz, are you there? Hello? Hello. <laughs> Maybe we should call him. Maybe he's given yeah. up <laughs> waiting for us. Well, he did accept the panelist invitation, so he's oh. got to be there. Oh, so he must be there. Yeah. Oh, he's off. Yeah, he's, at, he's there, the panelist. Yeah, his microphone oh, just you know, went mute. He's got his microphone off, and you've got the did video off. Do you know how to turn the, the microphone on, Mr. Diaz? You look at the bottom of the screen, bottom left. Yep. You see a, a camera icon or a microphone icon. And if either of them struck through with a red line on the lower left-hand side of your screen. It appears he's got his microphone turned on now. Yeah, he keeps turning on and off. I guess just the video. Okay, the micro we can deal with just the microphone if that's all you have. Can you... Can you speak? He might have his his volume very low because yeah. he want to hear everything that we were saying before. I, don't, I wouldn't blame him, but here. <laughs> so I think if you go to the, um, it's possible he might have the wrong microphone selected if he's using a computer. So if he goes to where the little microphone button is and he clicks on the arrow pointing up next to it. Do you have his phone it. number by any chance? 
Um, let it's me here, see. It's here on the um, well, then if it's business, business or home yeah. phone. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to find that. Uh, right on the plan. management. Yeah. The front of the management plan. 609 658 All right. I'll give him a call. And I can give you his email also. I have the email as well, but thank you, Hilda. All right. Okay. Running low on caffeine. <laughs> you know, why don't we, I wasn't going to have a break because I knew we'd get through these quicker than nine o'clock. Why don't we take, just, just take a minute here. Um, yeah, just, I'm just going to take a minute and walk away. I'll be back. And Rob, if you get him, uh, don't let him go off. Mr. Chair, uh, Rob hasn't checked back in yet, so you didn't miss anything. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Can you hear me okay? So uh, he's he's working on uh, connecting with a different device, so he should be on shortly. I apologize right. for the delay, everybody. Hello, Antonio. Can you hear me? Yep. So. Um... <laughs> I'm not hearing. He's still working on it. Oh, I can hear you. Okay. All right.
All right, everybody, technical delay. He's going to call in to the webinar um, and use his audio through his phone. So we're working on it. We appreciate the patience. I'm sure, you know, this meeting is moving relatively quick with a big agenda. So it's still moving quick. It's it's the last item, too. And Philip, thank you for staying awake with us. Yeah. <laughs> Did not anticipate technical difficulties tonight. I don't know. I don't feel sorry for Philip at all. No. <laughs> I don't feel sorry for Philip either. Yeah. Probably well, got, some in Ireland. You got a pretty good game, Philip. Go ahead. What did you say, Hilda? I said it's probably sunny in Ireland. Probably. It we is got midnight, so no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got Irish thing is activated. <laughs> We used to blame it in Paris all the time on Irish Sea. <laughs> so I got the phone number up. He just has to figure out how to unmute himself. So he does that by star nine. Is that correct? I believe that's to raise your hand. I think if you press. So Antonio, try pressing one. See I've also works. been told you may have to like swipe your screen or tap on it to see the various functions. But I'm trying to figure out how to, if somebody's calling it, how do they unmute on Zoom? Let me just figure that out real quick. Mute on Zoom. Star nine is ready. Okay, so press stars. Did you do it? We got it. Okay, good. Hello, hello. Oh, yes. We are. yes. There we are. Yay. Yay. I'm so sorry, guys. It's, all right. it's okay. It's all right. Um, oh my God! This is this is the first time that I'm using my tablet and this thing, and without my wife, and it's, it, it was really nervous. <laughs> but I'm good. <laughs> How you doing, guys? <laughs> it'll we're, be we're, it'll be easy for, easy from here on out. <laughs> all right, hard, all right. Hard, I feel comfortable now. You had the hard part of the meeting already, I and mean, you're doing it without your wife, so that makes it even even harder. Uh, Oh my God! It really is. This is my second language, and I'm I'm really nervous, but I think <laughs> I can do it. She's taking care of my my kids. So, um, Mr. Diaz, give us oh. your name and address for the record, and then proceed and uh, just give us a, a very brief um, synopsis of why you're here to visit, uh, why you're here before us tonight. Yes, yes. Well, as you know, uh, I've been working uh, on town since uh, three years ago. Uh, we've been enjoying uh, to serve the community in Amherst, but uh, we we find a better opportunity going to this new location. Uh, I think uh, for business it will be much better for us, it's because uh, it's not many competitions all in that area, and we feel uh, really comfortable with uh, with the new tenant and with the new landlords there. They're supporting us to to make the the project and uh, support the project, you know. So. That was uh, one of the big reasons with the way this, way we decided to move over there, and you know, make a cheaper cost and make better business. That's why all, all what we're trying to do. Um, just for remind the the way the way that we do it, uh, you know, we we take care uh, about all our team. We, we we create a family over here, and we we really try to do our best uh, serving the community, uh, imp uh, improving the best fresh quality and good good service you know that's what we're trying to do it's it's a really tough business restaurants but um it's it's a passion you know it's a passion that we have um right now uh, we, we we're doing uh better because we, we got the location in northampton so this is doing really great uh, but right now we, we're trying to to make the best decisions for the company so that's why we we decide to move over there. Are you going to keep basically the same menu and the same type of service that you had that you had? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. We're gonna. Uh, it, it's you know like um, we, we know that this town it's with a lot of co college kids. Um, we we never try to improve uh, big parties there and all this kind of uh, a, a lot of alcohol and all this stuff. We always try to keep it family familiar. So our operation hours and this location will be 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. We're gonna keep the the breakfast as Cisco was doing, and you know we're at touch and they, they, we got already running in Northampton, so we, we're ready to serve uh, three meals a day, 
uh, with the focus, more the focus for, in the food. But, you know, we uh, eventually we're going to apply for the liquor license because it's it's a great addition to margarita with your tacos, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I do know. Um, <laughs> well, I, I have only one question, and that is that I'm sad to see you leave Amherst before I could walk to you. Um, Same and, here. Same yeah, here. <laughs> and enjoy your your business there. I uh, So I, I hope maybe you'll return with a, a third restaurant. Uh, <laughs> Back to Amherst, because I, I enjoyed your location there, but I also enjoy going to um, Cows Lane. So that, uh, I look forward to seeing your place there. Uh, I don't have any other questions. You've managed to, I think you've, as far as I'm concerned, I think you've met the requirements of, of, of uh, condition six. You've listed all the things that are required of the management plan and the additional information. You've given us a good description. I understand, I see the uh, seating chart is from the old Cisco's restaurant. I'm assuming that you're going to keep the, that means that you're going to keep the basically yep. the same seating chart. Yeah, exactly the same. You know, as, as I've been learning in the past three years, it's better don't fix the things that are not broke. <laughs> that place is perfectly designed, <laughs> you know? That's, that makes sense. Do any of the other board members have questions? All right, this is a public meeting. Oh, well, go ahead, Ms. Marshall. Yeah, yeah, just confirming. There's no outdoor seating, is there? No, we're not applying for that this year. Uh, the, the, we decided that was going to be a, a different story. The, the thing is that we're going to get up and running as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. and that's not the, the main thing right now. So that, that may be the, um, a public discussion the next year. Yeah, okay, thank you. Ms. Greenbaum. I just want to say that your downtown loss is North Amherst game. We really <laughs> need a lunch place up here. Yeah. Lunch place. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's you right. And we're going to do our I, best I, job. I'm looking forward to coming in there. Yeah, Mr. Diaz, you're losing Great. The game. Great. I mean, it's. <laughs> well, well I'm really happy to hear that, guys. All right. Um, our job tonight is to approve or I mean, to consider and to approve or disapprove the, um, the, um, that he met with condition six, which is he has to provide the, uh, a new management plan and any other information necessary to confirm that the building is being, that the use is, that his operation is going to be the same as is approved under the use of the special permit. Um, and I would have a, a entertain a motion to approve uh, that. Um, that he does satisfy condition six. Self moved. Uh, that's we've got it tripled. So moved and tripled. Oh, good and here, oh my god. And not just that, it's good. That's uh, good. Well. Moved and tripled, not just second. Awesome, guys. All right. Um, any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, the vote occurs on the motion to approve the um, uh, request from of ZBA FY 2019-06, satisfying condition six of the previous um, special permit. The chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum? Aye. Congratulations, good luck. And thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you all that, my friend. Buena suerte. Thank you, and I really appreciate all your patience. <laughs> Muchas gracias. <laughs> all right, okay, thank you, thank you, good luck. Thank you. Um, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Next order of business is members of the public comment from members of the public on any matter not before the board tonight. Is anybody that wishes to speak on anything other than matters before the board? Raise your hand. Crickets. None. The last order is the last order of business is um, other business not anticipated within the last 48 hours. And that's in essence, that's new business. So, um, Rob, normally what we do is just give us an update for the upcoming meetings and the topics that we have. Well, Mr. Chair, I thought we were going to be doing this part of the meeting at like 930, but I'm glad to normally. see we're doing it at 812 instead. Um, yeah. So in terms of coming up next meeting, so our next meeting is going to be April 11th. We do have one public hearing scheduled for that. Um, it's for a uh, change of use, sorry, not change of use, change of occupancy status for a converted dwelling that was approved a few years ago. Um, from owner occupied to non owner occupied with a resident manager. 
And as of right now, we have nothing scheduled for April 25th, but we're anticipating permits coming in. We do actually have some review at the moment. Nothing is scheduled yet. Um, and that's all I have. When's the next solar farm hearing? So that is actually on the 25th and thank you for bringing that up. So that'll be one of two continued public hearings, uh, the Shoeshare Road Solar. Um, and then the other topic will be the continued hearing for the flag lot on Shea Street. So the owner is going to apply um, and become the applicant as well because the deal with the applicant um, fell through. So he has, he's taking over and we're going to re-advertise the public hearing beforehand. So, so on the twenty, that's the twenty fifth. Yes, that's April. the twenty fifth. So we have, we have, a, we do have the solar. Yes, the and solar hearings continued, and uh, most of that discussion is going to pertain to the updated site plans that are still being finalized by the applicant, and we're also going to talk more about peer review. All right, and so that's pretty much it. So we have a month off. Uh, you have April eleventh. Oh, uh, which in a couple of weeks, yeah, <laughs> a couple right. of weeks, but that's I, just one hearing. So I, I, was, I was hoping. I was one, hoping. I Go heard ahead. he was ready to come before the board. The one for Belchertown Road. Wait, which one was that? I'm sorry. The, the 40B. So no, that one is still. Um, they just recently did their. Um, they recently submitted their project eligibility letter to the state. And right now the state is taking feedback. And I believe, Rob, I don't know when the deadline is for that. Isn't that like in April for when we can submit public comments to the state? Yeah, we're just about a week into the 30-day review period. Yes. So we're still pretty early on. We're anticipating the 40 beef wayfires to come over the summer. Okay. Yeah. That's um, all I have. All right. Ms. Marshall, is your hand up for a reason or are you just saying hi? Uh, it's easier if I just leave my hand up all the time. No, <laughs> and that was a mistake, so I will put it back. <laughs> all right, well, um, I don't have anything else except I want to say thank you to all of you for tonight. Um, I, I was not, I'm not feeling very well. I tried to do the best I could. I kind of stumbled there a bit. So Rob and everybody else helped me out and found a few, uh, for making a few glitches. And so um, you taking this influenza influenza affected brain and oh, helping through this. so thanks so much yeah. um is there anything else any questions comments all right we got done early tonight you got 45 minutes free that you didn't plan and you can watch basketball you got two games tonight yeah we can get you got we'll connecticut go. and you got the celtics they gotta undo their mess on monday a little bit <laughs> That Monday, that was a disaster. How you can lose when you're 30 points ahead is beyond me. But. No, that's, that's snatching, well. snatching defeat from the jaws of victory, yes. <laughs> All right, folks. That was good. I like that, Sarah. I got to remember. OK. <laughs> all right, thank you all. Um, I'd entertain a motion that we adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Moved and seconded. I think I heard two. Uh, yeah, you got yep. to. All right, so moved and seconded. We adjourned. Motion is not debatable. The vote occurs on the motion. The chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum? Aye. And Ms. Marshall? Aye. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks very much. Thank you. Get better, Steve. Yeah, right. feel better. Feel better. Thank you.